Now, today's lesson is entitled, By Design Like Abba Abraham. By Design Like Abba Abraham. The word Abba, it's a, it's a Greek word. It has Hebrew roots, but it simply means father. But it has some connotations that we're going to discuss today. By Design Like Abba Abraham. Father, according to your decree in Ephesians 4, concerning prepare, perfecting the saints, we submit ourselves to this process today. Speak through my mouth, think through my mind, as you have equipped your people to hear and bring forth fruit. Thank you for our open heaven. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. All right, Genesis 18, verse 18 through 19. Let's read that together. Ready, read. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him. Why is it going to happen? Because I know him. What do you know about him, Father? That he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep my way, to keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him, so that he can bring on Abraham that which he has spoken on him. I want you to know that he's not talking about just bringing that which he spoke on Abraham. He's really saying, I want to bring upon uh, the, those that operate in the same nature as Abraham, all of those that will command their children and their households. There's a particular type of person that he's talking about, when he mentions Abraham, Abraham is just an example. So, but he says that, uh, that the Lord may bring upon him that which he has spoken. You may be seated. Glory to God. <clears throat> so, you know, my, my approach to ministry is based on a biblical truth that is laced all throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New. And that is this. The scripture says to know him is life. To know him is life. This means when we really know him, know how he feels about things, how he deals with things, um, our relationship with him will have life flowing through it because it's not, he's the, God is the type of being, our father is the type of being that your, our relationship with him can't just be conducted any kind of way and still be considered, you know, a, a productive, life-flowing relationship. Certain relationships with him does not allow the life of God to flow in that relationship. Now, when we know him, our lives, our, our lives will look like and feel like he's our father and our lifestyles are based on him and not us. So when the relationship is right, it's a real active, alive father-son relationship and your life looks like it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And so a lot of times we... Um, uh, don't necessarily look at the father like a real actual father that wants to be involved and wants to be the source of how our lives look, but that's what he is. And we can have relationships with him that have the life of God flowing through it where our lives really look like God is our daddy and that, and that our lives is, is directed by him and based on his resources, not our own. And that's why we like to teach in a way for us, for you to get to know him, get to know him for real so that you can deal with him the way that he really is and have the life of God flowing through that relationship. Say, say amen, somebody. Amen. Now, now, so to know him is life. So here's something that he wants you to know about him. So I came to teach you something about him so that as you know this about him, you can deal with him this way and you'll begin to see more life flowing through your relationship with him because when you learn his ways and learn how he thinks, learn how he does things and you operate with him like that, the life of God will begin to flow in a relationship even more because you're dealing with him in truth. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. He wants you to know the truth about him and deal with him based on the truth. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So here's something he wants you to know about him. He gave me this to deliver to you. He wants you to know this about him. The father blessed everything that functions within the integrity of his design. The father has blessed everything that functions within the integrity of his design, meaning he has established an automatic replenishment system for 
everything that flows and operates within the function of his original design. There is an automatic replenishment system already in place. You don't have to pray for it. He don't, you don't have to ask him for it. He, he did it up front. He blessed it up front. His original design is blessed. Anything that functions within that design will experience that blessing. Amen. Now, so everything functioning within design is self-sustained by the blessing of creation. He did this right at creation. When he created everything, he established blessings inside of a relationship. And this relationship was, hey, I, I've designed everything a certain way. In order for everything to function and work and get its maximum capacity, it has to function the way I designed it. And I, and I already blessed that function and blessed that design. So anything that functions within that, you fall up under that blessing that he put on that thing from the beginning. Amen. Say amen if you understand. Amen. Now look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. You need to notice about the father because it's not hard to find out how to be blessed. All you have to do is find out what was the original design. Amen. Because he's already blessed the original design. Amen. 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 Watch this. Genesis 1, 31. Ready? Read. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. When the Bible says very good, this is, this is an endorsement. This is not just the father looking at everything. Say, okay, that's, that's pretty good. All right, I'm done. No, that's him saying. I'm concluding my work. Everything that I have created is very good. I am endorsing it to function in the way that I created it. And I am endorsing it to be fruitful and to multiply and to have all of the resources that it needs as it functions in this design. This was his seal of approval on what he created. And this was his way of saying, if you stay within this design, you don't ever have to wonder if worry about being Fruitful, multiplying, you don't have to worry about being replenished. If you stay within this design, it's already blessed. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. All right. Now, this endorsement by the Father sealed everything he created, including the functions, the functions. So if he said, for example, if he said, hey, let the, uh, subdue the earth. Subduing the earth is a, is a function that is blessed. As long as you operate within that design, you are going to be blessed. You are going to experience the blessing because subduing the earth is a blessed function. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Replenish the earth. If you replenish the earth, you are going to be under the blessing of the original design because you are acting like you are supposed to act the way that he originally designed you. He wants you to know that that's how he operates so that you have a great relationship with him and that you won't begin to ask him to bless things that's outside of design. Amen. Glory to God. You won't pray prayers that's outside of design. When you understand, hey, everything that's everything that he designed, if I function within that design, it's already blessed. I don't even have to pray for that. That's already done. All right. So everything that remains in this form is automatically under the blessing. It's like a replenishment blessing. It's coming constantly uninterrupted. Why? Because you are functioning in the original design. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's good to know about the Father. So that way, can't nobody stop your blessing. Can't nobody hinder it. You ain't got to be thinking about no haters and all that stuff. Haters don't have nothing to do. All you got to do is find the design. If I act like he designed me to act, I am going to be abundantly supplied always. I'm never going to have moments where I don't have enough. You heard that, didn't you? As long as I act like I've been designed to act, I am never going to have shortage and not enough. Because that's not the position that is designed for lack. That's not the position that's designed for shortage. Shortage is designed for everything out of design. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. When I'm in design, I'm supposed to have more than enough. When I'm in design, I'm supposed to live in the land that flow with milk and honey. For example, he told the trees and the fish and the cattle to be fruitful and multiply. I'm just going to give you an example of what I mean. 
This is what he told them in the beginning. Be fruitful and multiply and be food for men. That's what he told them to do. Now watch this. The father has never had to come and re-bless the trees to make them fruitful again, nor has he had to come and re-bless the fish or the cattle. As long as cattle is hamburger for me, they are always going to be blessed and replenished because they are operating within original design. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, it was because the tree was not operating as it was designed to do. Because everything that is operating as it's designed to do is under the covering of the original blessing of God. Watch this. The, re the father rebuked Cain because he was out of design. But he didn't rebuke Abel. What did he do? He received him. He said, you, we in fellowship. Why? Because you operating within design. As long as you operate within design, he always receive you. He only rebuked him because he got out of design. Jesus rebuked the storm. Why? Because his, it was out of design. The father never designed weather to hurt and kill people. And therefore, Jesus rebuked it. Why, why am I telling you that? So you can see um, that when stuff get out of design, that's the only time it gets rebuked. That's the only time it falls into curse. That's the only time it does not have the blessing of the father. Any other time, any other time, it's under that original blessing. Watch this. Jesus rebuked the money changes at the temple. Why? They was out of design. He said, my father's house is supposed to be a house of prayer. You have turned it into a den of thieves. Therefore, this house is out of design. So he rebuked their actions because they were operating out of design. Everybody say, stay in design. That's all you got to do. Watch this. Jesus rebuked the devil talking through Peter because he was what? Out of design. He was not designed to tell Jesus what his future was going to be. Just like the devil is not designed to tell you what your future is going to be. Anytime the devil is telling you what your future is going to be, he is out of design. It is okay to rebuke him and put him in his place and let him know you don't determine what my future is. I got a daddy, glory to God. My father has already determined what my future is. So he rebuked Peter. He rebuked the devil in Peter because he was out of design. But what did he say to Peter when Peter said, you are the son of God? He just said, who do men say that I am? He said, blessed are you, Simon, Peter, because the father has revealed this to you. So he, 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 he rebuked him one time. He blessed him another time. Why did he bless him? Because he was in design. He was functioning like he was supposed to function. Receiving revelation from God the Father just like we were designed to do. And he said, blessed are you, Peter, because you're getting revelation like you're supposed to. If anybody's supposed to know who I am, it's supposed to be you. Watch this. Remember what happened. Uh, remember what happened to the servant that grew the five talents into ten. He got automatically replenished. He said, here, here goes some more. Why did he give him more? Why was that automatic replenishment turned on? Because he was operating in design. You were born to be fruitful. You were born to multiply everything you put your hands on. You were born to be prosperous with everything that you do. As long as you are functioning like you're supposed to, there's more on the way. There's more on the way. I'm trying to get y'all to get excited about who you are. You were born for this. Watch this. The Bible says God gives seed to the sower, which means sowers are on automatic replenishment from operating in design. And because you are a sower, there's more coming. You are under the original blessing because you are supposed to sow. As long as you are a sower, he gives seed to the sower. What is he saying? He says, stay right there. You're in my design. Keep sowing. There's more coming. We're going to keep on doing this until you have more than enough. Oh, my God. I wish somebody get excited about that. We're going to keep on doing this until you have more than enough. You have to understand that's how he operates. That's why he says, I give seed to the sower. It doesn't say I give seed to the stingy. Does it? It doesn't say I give seed, I give seed to them that hold all they got. I give seed to all them that put it in the can and sit on the lid. Don't say that, does it? He says, I give seed to sowers. So sowers are on automatic replenishment. If you are a sower, that's a good place to open up your mouth and tell the Father, I'm in design. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you're in design when you sow. Listen to this. Listen to this design feature. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So as long as you're a praiser, you're in design. And you are under the original blessing of the Father just because you know how to praise. Not like some of y'all doing right now. Not like some of y'all doing right now. Hallelujah. He said, let everything that have breath. That means that's a design. I designed you all. Anything that's breathing, I designed you to praise me. Glory to God. I designed you to praise me. So as long as you're praising God, you're in design. You wasn't meant to sit in the house of God and be quiet. You weren't, sitting, you weren't meant to sit in the house of God and be a spectator. You got breath in your body. He designed you to praise. He said, if those that I designed don't praise me, I'll make the rocks cry out. Tell your neighbor, you ain't in design while you quiet in the house of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all, some of you all, you funny, man. I, I see y'all from here. I see everything from here. Some of you all, it's hard for y'all to open up your mouth, man. Some of y'all shake y'all head. Some of y'all do this, but you won't say nothing. The Bible don't say, let everything that have breath shake their head. It don't say, let everything that have breath nod. Yes. It said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That means you were designed to open up your mouth. Hallelujah. God, I'm all shot up by y'all. You were designed to praise God. You were designed to praise him. Your voice was designed to say glory. He want to hear you say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Watch this. Listen to what it says in Malachi 2. In Malachi 2 it says, he says, if you don't give, if you don't set your heart, watch this. If you don't set your heart to glorify me, he said, I will come and curse your blessings. In other words, I put these blessings over you when you were operating within design. But now you don't want to praise me no more. Now you don't want to give me glory. He said, if you don't want to give me glory, you was designed to give me glory. If you don't want to give me glory, I'm going to come and put the curse on your blessings. So if I were you, I would learn how to set my heart to praise the Lord. I would learn how to set my heart to stay in design. Glory to God. I don't know about you. I praise him every chance I get. I praise him at home. I praise him in the car. I praise him at the grocery store. I praise him at church. I praise him everywhere I go. Why? It's designed for me. I was born. I know I was born. I was designed to praise the Lord. So here's the question. So you can see that he created things. He designed them. And as long as things are operating within design, they, they stay under the blessing of that design. You can see that, right? Now, when your mind scan the Bible, you see the word of God, you're going to see this all through the Bible. You're going to see the things that stayed in design, got, stayed under the blessing of God, the things that got out of design. As soon as they got out of what he designed them to be, they, they fell onto another environment. You can see that, right? So the question is, am I operating in design? How do I know when I'm operating in design? That's a good question, right? Let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. One way the Father showed me to understand original design is to take everything out of the context that I know it in. Um, this allows me to examine it as a subject from the word and not from my own knowledge and experience. So, he, so I'll take, a, like for instance, I'll take the subject, let's say church. He had me years ago take the subject church out of the context that I know and understand it in and what I've experienced in church and look in the word of God and just study what he had in mind when he called this thing church came together. And what I, what I noticed is that what I saw in his, his design, what I saw in his intentions was a lot different from the experiences that I had, had, that I had, had up to then. I, I realized that the experiences that I was having was not what he really called or designed church. I said, no wonder I'm not under a blessing because this is not in design. Amen. And if you think about it, all, you know, all of the gospel, popular gospel music, it, 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 it kind of tells a story. And, it, and it, most of it sounds like the blues a little bit. And most of it sounds like the people of God, all we ever do is go through. And all we ever do is have trouble. And all we ever do is just sit around and wait on things to get better. And things are going to get better one day. You know, and uh, so that's what most of it, that's what the, that's what the storylines of most. But when I read the Bible, it didn't say that about church. It said that this, this, this body is going to be 
The gates of hell are not going to prevail against this body. This body is going to have power over all the power of the devil. This is the group that's going to be abundantly blessed and supplied because they Abraham seed. And when I looked at the church in the Bible, I said, wait a minute. I know how when he called me to be a pastor, I knew what not to do. We're not following. We're not going after that out of design church model. We're going to be the church that he called us to be. Full of power, full of glory, and full of the Holy Ghost. Abundantly supplied, everybody well. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? Y'all like like y'all don't agree with this kind of church. Everybody well, everybody wealthy, everybody fully supplied. Everybody love the Lord, full of the Holy Ghost. Everybody praising at the same time. Everybody in one mind and on one accord. That's the church I saw in the word. He said, so when I, called, when I called you, you structure it like that. You structure it like what I showed you. If you want life to flow, if you want to stay under the original blessing that I designed for churches. Listen, churches is supposed to be where all of the people, all of the people have great grace on them. Church is supposed to be where everybody have no lack, no needs. I read it in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. It said they had great grace on them and none of them have any, had any needs. Church is supposed to be where everybody get healed. Glory to God. We working on that? We, it, hey, this is what church is supposed to be. We're not, we're not uh, going back on it. We're not uh, dwindling it down. We're not going to let it get watered down. We're going to keep on, keep on believing until everybody whole. Tell your neighbor, that's in design church. That's in design church. Now, when churches think like that and operate like they, they get under that blessing that he originally designed for churches. And I don't know about you, but I, I begin to see and experience the blessing that he had for churches. I, I see it in my life. I don't know about you, but I hear the testimonies and testimonies of all of my brothers and sisters. I see that you all are getting under that blessing. And you see that grace starting to flow in your life. Tell your neighbor, that's because we in design. And we're going to, and we stand in design. And we're going to stay in design until everything he promised. Just like Abraham, we're going to stay in design until everything he spoke about us is going to be on our lives. Come on, church, talk to me now. See, I thought, I thought that people, and you do, I thought people, hey, people are going to appreciate uh, uh, finding a church that's in design, that believe like the Bible says. I believe that we're not supposed to have shortage. I believe the children of God are not supposed to have shortage and lack. I believe we're supposed to have the best marriages. I believe we're supposed to have the best relationships. I believe our lifestyles are supposed to be examples to everyone everywhere. That's the church that I read about. So you see, he, so when, when you take things out of the original context that you know it in, and you study it as a subject, I did that to Jesus. I took Jesus out of the typical Jesus that everybody know, and the Father taught me and showed me his real heart through the word of God, what he was all about. I did the same thing to the, 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 the title sonship, son. What is a son of God? I took Jesus out of it. I took us out of it. I took the word of God and I saw what a son of God really is. And a son of God is an heir that owns everything that the father owns. Glory to God. A son of God is in charge in the earth realm. And whatever that son declares is coming to pass. Glory to God. So now that I got God's version of sonship, I operate within that. That's how I have a relationship with him that has a flow of life on it. I don't come around acting uh, second class, down low like everything. I heard a song the other day said, the devil on my trail, but I'm saying all is well. I'm like, wait a minute, how the devil on your trail when you the one that have power over all his power, you supposed to be on his trail. If he on your trail, that means you running. That's not what sons of God do. Jesus ain't never run from no devil. When Jesus came around, them devils start squirming. That's the same thing that's going to happen when you come around. Because you are in design. You are a bona fide, blood-washed son of God. You ain't just going to church. You're not just going to church. You are being taught how to be a son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not just wasting time coming to church. We learn how to do this thing like the word say so that we get the results that the word of God say we're supposed to get. Say amen about that. All right, now, so let's look at this thing called father. I know y'all saying, well, doc, this is supposed to be Father's Day. You're talking about everything but father. Now, let's talk about it now. Okay. Now, I got you right where I want you. Because what I did was I took the, the concept father out of the context like I did other things. And he showed me some things about fatherhood 
that I just want to share with you real quick. And then I'm going to speak a blessing to you, brothers. He gave me a blessing for you. Um, I'm going to sow a seed, give you a gift, but I want to teach you something about who you are. Because there is nothing, no greater revelation than self-revelation. When you learn who you are as a person, it grows your being. It turns you into something else. So I want to re reveal something to you fathers about yourself that he showed me. Look at Romans chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 16. Romans 4, 16. Glory to God. All right. Let's read it together. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, this verse calls Abraham the father of us all. This term father means many, many things, including biological. But the, the focus for this teaching is the metaphoric definition, the, the metaphoric nature that the father intended when he said the word father, he meant this thing called source. When he said father, he meant source or Abba. I am a Abba, a source, a father. So God the Father gave men a title that belonged to himself only. He was the only thing that could call himself father at one point. So he gave men and he shared with men that title, Abba, father, source, making man that which things originate from. If you are a source, you are now that which things originate from. Uh, so uh, it is driven by you and it is sustained by you. So when he said the word Abraham father, he was saying, I am making Abraham a source which things will originate out of him, things will be driven by him, and things will be sustained by him. So that's what a father is. A father is a source. Everybody say source. Now, so this source called father is really the nature of father that God intended when he used the word father. When he used the word father, he's talking about himself, and he's talking about himself as a source. You can only be father to those things which originate out of you. So you can, that's what a father is. And you, you, you have the right to drive those things. You have the right to sustain those things because that's the right of a father. Now, everybody say source. Now, this is why the father uh, did not build two bodies out of the dust. Only one. Um, he took a rib. That word rib in the Bible is really part. It don't mean he actually broke his rib. It's a part. That's the Hebrew word part. So if you if was told in, in, when you was a kid that God put Adam to sleep and broke his rib, that you, now you got all the kids scared of God because he's breaking people's rib. It just means he took a part, a part out of him. So he took a part out of a uh, Abba, uh, Adam, and made, made him the woman's source. So, the, so God the Father was not the woman's source. Adam was. Why? Because he wanted to establish Adam as the father, the Abba of the earth. So he made him the only source. That's why he didn't go to the earth and build two. Now this, does, this, wasn't, this doesn't diminish mother because he gave her some distinguishing qualities also like this. This was just to establish Adam as Abba. He didn't want there to be any uh, confusion about what a father is. A father is a source out of which things originate. A father is the one that drives that thing, and a father is the one that sustains that thing and turns it into what it's going to be. So that's what he meant when he said, use the word father. All right, now, so like I said, this wasn't to diminish mother. This is just about uh, establishing uh, what Abba is. Now, this is an honorable position because fathers get to be the source of something that they originate. You get to be the source of something. So this is an honorable position. When the father created you and called you to be a male figure, a, a, father, a, a father, a male, he gave you the opportunity to be the source of something that originates out of you. And this is an honorable position because of what it means and what you mean to what you produce. Watch this. Uh, so now that you have fathered something, and you know, you can father many things. You can father an uh, organization. You can, you can father uh, a, a, a business. You can father... Um, uh, some kind of uh, institution 
You know, you can, you can father a foundation. There's a lot of things that can come out of you. Just understand that when it does, that you are responsible for driving it and you are responsible for sustaining it. Because father doesn't just mean to originate. It means to originate and to drive it and to sustain it. Now, so now you and your relationship with God gets to drive that thing as far as you can take it. In other words, my family, my family, I am the Abba of my family. And because I am the Abba of my family, he gave me the responsibility to drive that family and to take that family and to push it as far as it can go. And so as far as the family go, as far as I go, that's how the family goes. So I want, to, I want you to know as a father, you are responsible for being the person that has the vision and the drive to make sure that you know I am an Abba, I'm a father, I'm a source, and my family is going to be blessed because I'm going to drive this thing with the help of God as far as we can go. And I'm not stopping short of what I see in my vision, in my spirit. That's why the Bible said, the young men shall dream, dream, old men shall have vision. Because you are the Abba. You have to have the vision because you are responsible for driving. As the, as the father goes, so goes the family. Now, so I want you to understand that when he calls you father, he's not saying, he's, he's saying to you, hey, I'm going to let you be a source like me. I'm also going to let you be the source of how far it goes. I'm going to let you be the source of how it's sustained. I'm going to let you be the source of how well it's taken care of. I'm going to let you be the source of, you know, what it looks like. I'm going to let you be the one that hold a vision for the thing. I'm going to let your thinking determine how far you go. I'm going to let your thinking be the thing that drive what neighborhoods your family live in. I'm letting you be a father like me. Glory to God. Say amen, somebody. So this is an awesome responsibility, and this is who you are. All right. Now, y'all with me on this? So a family, an organization, a relationship can only go as far as the source goes. Um, prophetess used to tell me, she used to say, when I used to deal with the girls, she used to say, you, you made them feel bad. You made them feel bad. And I would say, well, I, I, I just said to them the same kind of stuff you say to them all the time. She said, but you the father, though. It's different when you say it. You the source. You are supposed to be the one that infused them with what they need to get through life and be successful. So you have to be careful how you say I can say it one way, but you have to be careful how you say you the source. How many of y'all understand what I'm saying? Hey Amen. Glory to God. So I want you fathers to know that you are uh, extremely important. I want you to understand you are extremely important. And after today, you're going to be infused with a new understanding and infused with a new vision and infused with some new energy to take up your place as Abba. And take that thing and drive it to where it's supposed to go. I declare over you, you and your family are going to glory only. Nothing short of the promised land for you and your clan. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at Genesis 18. That's where we started out with Abraham. Now look at that again. Put Genesis 18 up there again. Watch this. Let's read this together. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great nation, a great and mighty nation. Why is Abraham going to become a great and mighty nation? Because Abraham is going to act like a source, like he is designed by God to be. And as long as he fits under that design, he is going to have the blessing of God over his life and his whole family is going to be blessed. He said, if you stay in design and act like a source, you are going to be a great and mighty nation. And I came to announce to you brothers today, you are operating in design. You are the source of your family's well-being. And as long as you act like the source of your family's well-being, you are under the blessing of the original design. The grace of God is going to help you take your family everywhere that you're supposed to be. I wish I had somebody in agreement with what I'm saying. You are going to get there. He says, seeing Abraham shall surely, surely become a mighty. Can, I can say that about you. Your family is surely going to become a mighty and great nation. Yes, they are. Why? Because that family is not void of an Abba. Your family has an Abba. That's why you in church right now, praising the Lord. That's why you here right now with your righteous self. 
That's why you're here right now, being filled with the word of the Lord. You're saying to yourself, I'm an Auburn, I'm going to be a man of God all the days of my life. And because of that, your family is going to reach. I said, your family is going to reach. My family is going to reach. I have determined in my heart. I'm talking about me now. I have determined in my heart. I am an Abba. I know why I was, I know what my design is. I know why he put me here. He didn't put me here to be no lazy, shiftless, good for nothing, no account person. He put me here to lead a clan to the promised land. I am my family's Joshua. And because I'm in my family, we're going to the promised land. I want you to know you are a part of my spiritual family. I am your spiritual father. I want you to know you have an Abba in the house. And we are going where God say we're going. If I got to drag you, kicking and screaming, we're going to get everything that the father says is ours. We're going to get everything that the father says is ours. And we are not stopping anything short of glory. I'm going to say that again. We're not stopping anything short of glory. It don't make no difference how many numbers there are. It can just be a handful of us. And we're going to march in just like the Father says we are. Hand in hand, praising the Lord. Giving glory to God all the way. Hey, glory. I've already determined some things for this house. See, seeing Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And what happened? And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So Abraham is our Abba. He was the originator of the faith line that you and I are a part of. He had a physical line and he has a faith line. We are, he is our Abba. He's already done the work. He's done, he did what he was supposed to do. He, he, he uh, taught his children. He raised up his family. So much so that the father could bring through his line Jesus Christ. We got connected to Abraham through Jesus Christ and now we are on our way because our Abba has already finished, crossed the finish line. We already know where we headed because the, the battle is already won. The, the fight is already fixed. We know where we're going to end up at. That's the power of having an Abba in the earth realm. That's why, the, that's why you're here. That's why you ought to throw your shoulders back a little bit, hold your head up and let the world know I'm an Abba. I'm not just a male, I'm an Abba. I'm a source. Glory to God, going to use me to drive some things further than it would be if I wasn't here. Further than it would go if I wasn't present. Look at your, look at your name and say, you, you married the right guy. You married the right guy. Tell him, you married the right guy. Because God, the Father gave you an Abba. Does not yet appear what he shall be, but he coming. He stick with Dr. Andre, he coming. Your Abba is on the way. He going to learn how to stand up and be the source. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are designed to be a source. Listen, that's why the Bible never says that the woman is supposed to give herself for her husband. It does not say that. It said the man is supposed to give himself for his wife. Why? Because you her source. She's not yours. You're hers. You are the source of love. Safety, comfort, pleasure, uh, 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 um, uh, security. You are the source of uh, luxury, environment. Because she's with you, she's supposed to have everything that she needs. That's why he said, you're the source. You give yourself for what you're the source of. You fathered that relationship when you said, will you, will you, will you. Will you marry me? Will you come hang out with me? Will you spend your life with me? You fathered that relationship. Now you the source. Now it's time for now it's your turn to drive it. You gotta drive that thing and make sure she has everything she needs. Why? You that kind of source. Because as long as you acting like a source, he's gonna keep replenishing you and replenishing you and replenishing you. You are gonna be under an open heaven all the days of your life because you are operating in design. They got it twisted these days. The men want the women to take care of them and all this kind of thing. The woman ain't your source. You hers. You're supposed to make sure she has everything she needs. 
My wife told me years, this years ago, years ago, when our relationship was messed up and we were working on things, she would say, you, don't, you didn't make me feel safe in that situation. You didn't protect me. You didn't, I got tired of hearing, I'm like, wait a minute. What, what, what is she asking me to do? And the father revealed to me, you are her covering. You are the, you are the source of her safety. And, and if she don't feel safe with you, and you're supposed to be the husband, you the man, I put you there for that reason, then you missing in action. Therefore, I told her, I'm not going to be the source of misery for you. I'm not going to be the source of pain for you. I'm not going to be the source of trouble for you. I'm going to be the source of blessing or nothing else. You're not going to get to the end of your life and say, because you was with me, you had a miserable life. No way. I said, I'm going to take, I'm going to make sure I make up for every, every tear you cried. I'm going to make up for it. Every trouble I gave you, I'm going to make up for it. Now ask her, am I making up? woo Ask her, am I making it up? Because I'm the source. When I leave, it's going to be hard for me to get replaced. I'll make sure of that. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Glory to God. She's going to be looking around like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Hallelujah. I had the source. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. That's right. But I'm just telling you, man, you are the source. You got to see yourself. This is what the Father designed you to be. And as you live and operate in that design, you will come under the blessing that he spoke over Father. There's some blessings of provision over Father where you will never be broke. When it was time for Isaac to get married, Abraham took out of his own riches and his own treasure They took gold bracelets and all kind of gold stuff and took it to the woman and said, the father of your soon-to-be husband sent this to you. Why? He was sending a message. When you marry into this family, you're marrying into a source. God the father put a man here. And because a man is here, you don't have nothing to be be concerned about. When you hook up with my son, you're coming under a covering. That's why I told my son-in-law, I said, stick with me. Pop's going to take you there. Glory to God. My daughters like rich stuff. So I got to get them to be rich. I got to get them to think rich. I got to get them to look rich. Why? Because I got to get my daughters what they after. My daughters after an Abba. I need a source. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. (laughs) Hallelujah. Watch this. For I know him. The father says the reason why he's going to become a great nation, the reason why he's going to drive his family and be a source, the reason why his family is going to go, and when he's talking about his family, he's talking about you too. He, he's, he's talking about both parts of Abraham's family, which includes you. That's why you're going to get everything that God promised you because your Abba did what he was supposed to do. He says, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Listen to this. He's really saying, because I know him, he is going to remain a source. And because he's going to remain a source to get me a righteous family in the earth, I'm going to be able to do all the things that I spoke over him. This is the law. This is what he said over every Abba. Because you are operating in design, I'm going to be able to do all the things that I spoke over fathers. Now, if you're a father, throw your hands up and say, I receive, I receive. Glory to God. If you're going to be a father, throw your hands up and say, I receive. All right. Now, watch this. Let me finish. The secret to being a source that spearheads families, businesses, organizations, marriages, relationships, and finances is the connection of the source to its source. Your source is the established blessing of original design. He has already blessed Abba. Therefore, when you think of yourself as a source and you start thinking and acting like a source, you are now operating in design. I want you to, Father, this under the sound of my voice, every day from now on, I want you to wake up and tell yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a source and I'm going to be a source. I'm going to be a source today that everything that comes across my path 
because that's what I'm designed and built to do. Glory to God. And so that's the reason why when you call me on the phone, all you brothers got my personal phone number. I answer the phone and say, how can I help? What's up? What do you need help with? Why? Because I'm a source. I've determined myself to be a source. That's the reason why I study. That's why I read. That's why I know as much as I do. I determine myself to be a source. So then when you call me, I'll have an answer for what you're dealing with. And if you think of yourself like that and begin to act like that, glory to God, hallelujah, if you think like that and begin to act like that, you're going to see the kind of blessings just like a father is supposed to have. A source is not supposed to be empty because if a source is empty, it has nothing to give to that which it originated. And if it births something, it has to feed it and, and, and take care of it, right? So a father cannot be empty. That's why as a father, if you act like a source, you are always going to have provision. Your source is the established blessing of original. He has already blessed Abba. Therefore, when you think like it, think like a source, when you start thinking and acting like a source, you are operating in design. You don't take on the father's sourcing responsibility without a commanding trust and conviction in your source. I do this knowing. I do this knowing that I can be a source for thousands of people because of my source. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So when you, when you want to be a great source to your family, to whatever you father, you have to know that it's your connection to your source that gives you the ability to do it. There's no way you can handle all this responsibility without a source behind you helping you to get done what you're trying to get done. That's the reason why we come to church. That's the reason why we praise the Lord. As men, that's the reason why we lift up our hands. We're depending on him. The Bible says, he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And those who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. So I want you, every father in this house to know that as you trust the Lord, he is going to bless you. As you trust him as your source, he's going to keep you replenished. As you trust the Lord as your source, he's going to keep driving you further and further ahead. And moving you and your family forward in Jesus' name.